I'm gonna go up one level, reset the scene, disable the box here and add a sphere. And I wanna talk a bit about emitting rigid body pieces. Let's dial this sphere scale down to say 0.2 and again set its primitive type to a polygon with a frequency of eight in my case. And let's move it up a bit so it doesn't intersect with the ground plane, like so. And the first emission setup I wanna try is basically just shooting rigid body spheres into my scene. And for that, I'm gonna use the RBD configure, wire that in after my sphere. And this is there to set up my sphere as a rigid body object, basically, without any breaking going on. And also I want my sphere to have an initial velocity. So it moves somewhere, maybe up or diagonally upwards. Let's use an attrib randomize for point attribs. I don't want to randomize the color, which is called CD. I want to randomize velocity, which is abbreviated with a V. And I don't want any values on my X axis. However, my Y value, so upwards should be between one and say 15 with my Z value between somewhere, say 0.5 and five. Let's wire this in here. RBD configure is already set up to transfer the velocity attribute here. And finally, let's wire this in an RBD solver. Again, shift enter to automatically wire up all those three inputs here. On my RBD solver, I wanna check a few things. First, I wanna make sure the ground plane is enabled like this. And then on the bullet object tab, I want to check emit RBDs. Let's save this and hit play. And you can see this snake being stuck and getting slower and slower being emitted here. So a few issues with that. First, the RBD solver here tries to emit a sphere every frame. We definitely don't want that. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna wire in a few switches down here. Let's start with one switch and let's wire in a null in the first slot. And on the switch itself, let's drop down an expression here. So I wanna check if my current frame number modulo, let's say eight, equals to one. So what that will do, every eighth frame, this switch will try to toggle. So it'll switch to the second input that I'm gonna wire in here. Let's just copy this, wire in our main geometry as a second input on this one, paste that switch two more times and wire in the constraints and the proxy geometry respectively. And then the switch's outputs go into our RBD solver here. So we'll end up with something like this. One issue I found out with the RBD solver is that sometimes when you do stuff like this, modify your network, it does not always reset the simulation. So it's a good idea to go on your RBD solver, scroll up here and hit reset simulation when you're changing your network or changing parameters to make sure that the simulation is being updated. Again, let's hit save and play this. So now we can see a sphere being emitted only on each eighth frame. Let's reset this. And I think we can increase the velocity a tiny bit. So let's increase the min value to two and the max value to 20 on the Y axis and to one and 10 respectively on the Z axis. Again, reset the simulation and hit play. Yeah, that's more what I'd expect. So this is your kind of default setup for emitting rigid bodies into your scene. Let's increase the velocity a tiny bit more, three and 30 and maybe two and 15 here. Yeah, that's a bit more to my liking. And let's replace this solid sphere with a sphere that's been pre-fractured. So after this attribute randomize, let's wire in an RBD material fracture like so. And let's wire those three respective outputs into those switches here. But before let's just disconnect them from the RBD configure here. So this is what we did. Again, highlight the RBD board solver, reset the simulation, maybe save this and hit play. Way too fast. I speculate that the RBD configure sets up the density of this whole material a bit differently. So let's dial back our velocity here, maybe to yeah, one and 15 and 0.5 and five. Again, reset the simulation, hit play. almost there, but no breaking happening yet. And also, as you can see, each sphere seemingly has the same velocity. So it's not actually being randomized. And that is because in here in the attrib randomize under options, we're always having the same seed and that's not varying per frame. So let's add to it our current frame, $FF like this. So when we go back to frame zero, reset the simulation. We're seeing a few things. First, the simulation kind of stutters each time we're emitting a new sphere here. Second, 
our velocity now is really different from each sphere to each other. The stuttering happens because each time we're spawning a new sphere, we are executing this RBD material fracture newly. So instead of changing the sphere's velocity before the RBD material fracture, and thus triggering this node here to recook each time a new sphere is spawned, let's just copy our atrib randomize, disable it here, and instead let's put it down here in the proxy geometry, which is what's being used to simulate and to transfer the velocity into my simulation. So again, back to frame one, reset our simulation and hit play. And now the simulation is running marginally faster. Also, I'm not seeing any braking going on here. So again, that's a case of the constraints being a bit too high. So on my constraints tab in the RBD material fracture, I'm just gonna dial back the primary strength of our glue constraints to say maybe 200 in this case. Again, RBD bullet solver, reset simulation and hit play. And I'm now breaking a bunch of spheres. This might not be the highest detail sphere or highest detail breaking I can imagine, but similar to the previous example with the concrete pillar, concrete column, you can just go in here and maybe add a few primary fractures, a bit of chipping and a bit of detail. However, your simulation, of course, will get slower then. But that is how you emit rigid body objects into your simulation.